topic that we can't dive in to do 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 on our Dr. Keegan Ramsey show. What's the show? What's the show? What's the show? Come your fears and unlock your sack 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 your s
who is uh, hungry and want a bite, right? And so that's fear's job. But the interesting thing about fear, when it kicks in, it does not have a subconscious. So it doesn't know that it is hindering us from doing all of the amazing things that we're supposed to do in our life. It doesn't know that. All it wants to do is protect you, right? So it is your job to actually overcome fear and tell fear that it has no place in your life, right? And so when I've been going through any situation in my life that I've gone through in terms of fear, the moment I said, okay, I'm in control, I'm going to tell my fear what to do is the moment that I was able to do something about it and move forward in my life. And I can tell you, I know that it is hard. I know that it's hard. I'll give you an example. When it was time for me to start my business, I had never started a business before. So this was my first business. I researched it. I did all these things. And but I was so, so scared. What if people don't want to hear me talk? What if people um, don't show up? All these thoughts came in my mind. And that actually hindered me from starting, even starting the business for years. Not to mention, I could have started the business and just worked the business part time on the side. You know, saying we all got side hustles um, that we can actually do. So but for me, I was so scared that I didn't even start the business itself. Right. And then finally, I'm going to go through some of the steps that I'm going to tell you that absolutely helped me to learn how to overcome my fear. And when I did that, I was able to start the business. And here I am today, almost 14 years later in the game, having taken my, taken my first step into this life that we call entrepreneur. Now, let me just tell you something about this life. It ain't easy. So I ain't, I'm just saying. <laughs> but this is this is my story in the sense of the way that I had to do things. And so it wasn't easy, but it was definitely worth it for me. But I was scared. I was absolutely scared. I can remember the first time I got on stage to actually speak, baby. Kiki Ramsey was scared, but I still did it anyway. But what I see a lot of when I'm coaching and when I'm, you know, working with leaders in organizations is that they know that they have the ability to do it, but they are allowing their fears to hold them back. And so a question that I want you to ask yourself is, number one, what is that thing that you want to do? What is that thing that you know deep down in your soul, in your spirit, all of that? that you know that you want to do and that you're supposed to be doing? And number two, why are you allowing fear to hold you back? I truly believe in coaching. Y'all know I'm an executive coach um, and I own a coaching company, PCATI. And I believe that we have the ability to ask ourselves these really, really powerful questions to get us from where we are to where we want to be, right? So those are the questions that I want you to start off with. But I mean, let's get a real definition because I'm I'm big on definitions. People say something I'm like, what's the definition of that? Right. <laughs> what's the definition? Because I think that we all should always have the baseline from which we work. Right. So when we talk about fear, that's an unpleasant emotion. Right. That is caused by your belief system. Right. It's caused by your belief that something is dangerous um, and that something can cause you pain. Right. That's what fear really is. And in the book, I go into detail, but I'm going to talk to you about eight main fears that I have actually um, found in my research that really holds us back. And so when I'm talking about these eight fears, what I want you to do is to think about your own life and which one actually resonates with you most. Which one do you feel is holding you back from reaching your destiny, your purpose, your goals? the most. So the number first one is the fear of the unknown. Yes. The fear of the unknown is one of the biggest fears that hold people back to this day. Now, let me just say this. There is no way that you can completely know every single thing. And the reason why the fear of the unknown holds us back is because this says, if I don't know what's going to happen next, then I don't want to move. Right. 
If I don't know what's going to happen next, I'm not willing to move forward. But let me just plant the seed to you right now. You're never going to know what's going to completely happen next. You never see every single step before you start. But this thing, this fear of the unknown has people all over the world not starting. You ain't started because you don't know what's going to happen next. And last time I checked, unless your name is God, Jesus, you're not going to know what's going to happen next. You might have an idea, but you might not see all of the steps. I, I think of it like this. God gives us all these visions, these dreams, these aspirations. And I feel like God shows us the, the end result, right? He shows us what's over there on that other mountaintop. But what he might not show us is the, is the, the, the direct path that we're going to go through. And chances are on that path, there are some valleys, right? You're going to go down. You're going to come up a little bit. You're going to go down again. You're going to come up again a little bit. You're going to go around the corner. All these, you know, all these pathways to get to over there. We see the over there. We see the other mountaintop. But what we do not see are the valleys and the lows in every step along the path. That's the unknown. So with this one, if you only will move forward when you see every step, you'll never start. You'll never take that next step. The second one is the fear of failure. This one was one that held me back for absolute years. I love for things to be right. I love for things to be neat. I love for things to um, look a certain way. I, you know, and if it doesn't look a certain way, then I want to change. I want to change directions, right? I can, you know, I can, I can tell you with. All the things that I've started in my career, like groups or coaching or speeches or whatever, having events and stuff like that. If it's not more than like a couple people in the audience, I, I'm feeling like it's a failure. So I'm feeling like I've failed. Not that the venture itself was just Un unsuccessful, but I am a failure. So I wouldn't do things in life because I felt like I was going to fail. Let me just say this to you. How are you going to ever know? <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm talking to myself too, right? Because I've dealt with all of these. How will you ever know if you never try? And you never give yourself opportunity to fail. I firmly believe that I have learned so many things, not from my successes, but from my failures, from, from, from things that I've tried and it has not worked. That is the way life is. But before now, I wouldn't even try because I was like, yeah, that ain't gonna work because I don't want to feel the pain of what failure will produce inside of me, right? Thank you, Dr. Gail. So the next one is the fear of pain. Now you, you all know that there is a, we love this whole instant gratification and we all work towards not feeling pain, right? Like we, like we wake up every day to not feel pain. And I understand it, right? No, who wants to wake up and be like, today I'm about to get into some pain. <laughs> no, nobody said that, nobody. Right. Nobody ever said they want to wake up and feel pain. So therefore, we all go towards pleasure and instant gratification in our life. But we but a lot of us don't move because we fear pain so much. Right. We fear pain so much. And until the pain of not moving is more than the pain of actually taking that next step, you will stay in that thing. So that could be a relationship, a bad habit or whatever. But until the pain is so much so that you have to move, a lot of people stay put and it's not healthy for your life, right? And so that fear of pain is a lot for a lot of people. I mean, even, you know, the whole thing about quitting smoking, right? Getting out of a bad relationship until staying in that relationship is more painful than not. You will stay in that relationship. 
So you got to switch it around how you associate pain and what you associate pain to. All right. Number four is the fear of rejection. So many of us have that, especially in the age of social media. Hello, somebody. I know I'm talking, right? The age of social media has so many people fearing rejection that we put out this persona that everything is perfect in our lives. And that is not true. Or we don't show up in spaces as our authentic selves because we, we think that people are going to re reject the real us, right? And I dealt with that one myself um, a long time. You know, for me, I'm like, I'm loud, I'm animated, but that's who Kiki is. That's who Dr. Kiki Ramsey is. I'm loud, I'm animated, I'm all those things. And until I was okay with, People saying what they're going to say, I didn't show up as me. I didn't show up the true me. I was not the version of me that you see today. I was more subdued, downplayed, all that kind of stuff. When have you ever known me to be subdued and laid back? That's just not me. Uh, <laughs> and so it's probably not you either. And so, sis, you got to show up authentically, but that fear of rejection will have you hiding behind a shell, right? It'll have you hiding the real personality of who you are. And let me just tell you this, the world wants who you are. Nobody ever said that, ooh, did you see this girl on social media? She's so boring. Nobody ever said that. <laughs> Nobody ever said that. So, but that fear of rejection is the thing that has us not showing up as our, as our authentic self. And then there's fear of loneliness. COVID-19 did it to us, right? I have not seen so many people taking their lives as they are in this moment in time. And, you know, I just think back to just some of the most recent um even suicides and stuff like that. And we think that people have it all together, but people are suffering in silence. And do you know that you can feel lonely in a house full of people, right? You can feel lonely around a whole bunch of people. I can remember during the pandemic, my oldest son, Tamazie, he um, moved back into the house uh, with us during the pandemic, which was to me great um, having him around. And then one day he was like, mom, I feel lonely. And I'm like, what you mean? I'm here. Your daddy here. Your siblings here. We all here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I work from home. He said, I know that, but you are here. You are here, but you're not here with me. Like we don't, go out to lunch. We haven't been able to, you know, just chat and talk. And I was like, wow, 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 wow. So here it is. We are in the same household, but he's still feeling lonely. And so if you look up, this could be you or somebody who you know personally. So I think that we got to really tap into that for people and make sure that we are asking the right questions questions when we're talking to our friends and our family members about whether they feel alone or not, right? And then number six, fear of inadequacy. I've shown up in that. You felt feeling very inadequate before, right? It's that feeling that we get when we feel like we're not enough, right? And I feel like a lot of us do it and we try to overcompensate for that. And that overcompensation has us stressed out. That's what that causes, stress, when we try to overcompensate for, the, for that fear that's showing up in us of feeling inadequate. And then number seven is the fear of lack. Oh, baby, listen. That fear of lack can have you messed up because you looking out here potentially at what other people got. And what you don't got and you feel like you're lacking something when in truth, you're not lacking anything. You just want something else. Right. Fear of lack has to do sometimes with even our basic human needs. I can understand that. Right. When you are lacking 
food, water, shelter, clothing, all of that. That's a base. Those are basic human needs that you want. But beyond that, some of us are feeling this lack for material things that we just want. So we have to watch what that is coming from. And then the last one is the fear of success. A lot of people don't necessarily understand this. People ask me, you know, Dr. Kiki, I don't understand why people would even fear success. It's interesting because when you become successful, chances are everybody who you are acquainted with can't come along, right? And you know this. And so because everybody can't come along, then that can cause friction in some of the relationships in your life. So some people fear losing the people that they have in their lives or losing the things that they have in their life right now. Therefore, they fear success or they fear getting even more successful than what they are because they're going to lose friendships. They're going to lose family members. People are going to look at them sideways like, oh, you think you you think you all that because you successful now. And it happens. It happens. People have even said those things about myself. And I'm like, no, I'm just out here trying to thrive. Right. I'm just out here trying to thrive just as I want you to thrive as well. Right. But that fear of success comes from the that thought that if I'm more successful, then I'm going to lose something. I'm going to lose relationships. And so that those are the eight fears. And I go, like I said, into more detail in the book, Get Courageous Now. Um, but those are the eight fears that really in my research I've seen to hold most people back from actually going out there and reaching their goals. And so when we talk about overcoming fears, before I actually give you some steps, I really want to dive into strengths really, really quick, because I think that we can overcome our fears by tapping into our superpowers, right? So superpowers for me are your strengths and your strengths are really those abilities and those traits and those skills that are considered positive in you, right? And guess what? We all got them. You got superpowers, girl. Like you got superpowers. I don't think that everybody recognizes what their superpower is, but you have superpowers. And I'll tell you for myself, my number one superpower is zest, baby. I'm going to show up zesty every single day, right? I, I can't, I can't help it. <laughs> I can't not help it. I'm going to show up zest. And what does zest mean? Showing up with an, an air of energy and excitement about life. That is who I am because trust me, I'm happy to be alive because there are so many people in my family, my friends who are not. And so I need to show up with zest. Other strengths of mine are humor. I love to be able to make people laugh. I just don't take myself too seriously all the time. I think that a lot of times we take ourselves too seriously. Like lighten up, laugh a little bit, smile a little bit. I'm a positive psychologist. And so I'm trying to bring the positivity at all times. Um, kindness, love, those are other strengths of mine. And I love um, the VIA, V-I-A, strength, character strengths assessment. It is absolutely free. Go online and take it. And then you can get your 24 character strengths as well so that you can know. But there's other ones like the strengths finder and all of that. So I really think that when it comes to strengths, you need to understand, number one, that you have them. So if you are here with me in the chat, go ahead and drop your strengths in the um, in the comment box so I can shout them out. But we all have strengths. And I think that we need to be able to utilize them and tap into them for ourselves, right? So when it comes to overcoming our fears, there's just really three things that I think that you need to do in order to take you from where you are to where you want to be. And it's three words, identify, assess, and choose. Identify, assess, and choose. So number one, you need to identify and acknowledge your fear. Now, don't be like me. All right, humor. I see you, Paula, humor. <laughs> um, 
you have to identify your fears. I just kind of gave you eight fears that are there. So number one, you got to look at those eight and identify which one is truly been holding you back. But you have to acknowledge it. Let me just say this to you. You cannot tackle what you first will not acknowledge. Mm. Go ahead, Dr. Kiki, say it again, honey. Let me say it again for you. You cannot, you cannot tackle what you first will not acknowledge. Now, let me just say this to you. I, uh, I have a bit of a rebellious spirit in me. You might can tell. And there are some times where I just don't want to acknowledge that I'm scared, that I'm wrong, all of those things. I mean, it is something to then humble yourself and go tell your five-year-old, you sorry, <laughs> right? That you made a mistake, right? It is something to have a conversation with your four-year-old to be like, buddy, I just, I'm, mommy is sorry. I didn't mean to yell. Okay. It's something to do that. That is a, that's a skill that's learned, but it, if you can learn it, it would absolutely change your life. I can remember being so rebellious that I would never, ever acknowledge what was wrong. And I thought that was a sign of power, but truthfully, that's a sign of weakness because you're not willing to accept help. And listen, baby, if you go, if you want to help me now. I need your help, right? I need your help. So when it comes to fear, whatever is holding you back, you got to number one, identify what that fear is and, and then acknowledge it. Say, you know what? I'm truly scared of that fear of the unknown or I'm truly, truly paralyzed by the fear of failure and I need to do, be able to do something about it. That's step number one. And number two, assess how the fear has actually been holding you back, right? I think that, we can tackle things when we actually have examples of how it's actually been hindering us. So if you say the fear of failure has been holding me back from going for that promotion or asking for a raise when I know I deserve it, then you need to assess that. And when you have that in mind, it will give you the courage to do number three, choose to move forward from a place of strength. Choose, right? Y'all see my sign. I mean, you know, if y'all listen to the podcast afterwards, I have a sign in the back of me that says, create your own happiness, right? You get to choose to be happy. You get to choose the life that you are living right now. The life that you're living right now is a series of decisions that you've made to get to this point. Now, let me just say this. Yes. Things happen to us. Things happen to us. Absolutely. But we get to choose how we respond to the things that happen to us in our life. Right. And I choose to believe that life doesn't happen to us. It happens for us. And I want life to continue to happen for me because the opposite is you dead. And nobody, don't nobody want to be dead. Right. <laughs> so you get to choose. And so for me, when it comes to moving forward in my life, I had to choose to move forward because I knew that I had a call and a destiny on my life to pour into women around the world. What is your call? What is your destiny in life? You got one. And then what is your strength? What can you use to then move forward in spite of fear. Because here's the thing. A lot of us are waiting for the fear to go away. It ain't going nowhere. It's not, right? It's not. It's, it, it's, it may still be there gnawing at you, but you still have to move forward. Now, some of us don't got fear, right? Some of us believe in the power of God and that God is going to take care of it. That's why I try to sit at all the time. But I will be honest that sometimes fear creeps up and I'm like, oh, boy, I am nervous. So you can't wait until the fear goes away. You literally have to move in spite of. And so what I do is I use my zest and my humor every single day to move forward, even though I might be scared. So what is your strength and how can you use that 
to move you forward? What is that superpower that you've been so beautifully gifted with? And how can you use that superpower to move you forward? All right, y'all, that is my time today on the Dr. Kiki Ramsey Show. So listen, I know that this message resonated with somebody. And if it resonated with you, then sis, it might resonate with somebody else. So pass it along, share it along. The Dr. Kiki Ramsey Show can be found on all podcast broadcasts, Spotify, Amazon, all of that. So share it out. And I lastly want to say, if you are a woman, who are looking for a supportive community of other women who are looking to find happiness and further their career in life, then I want to invite you to join us over in Happy Women Lead, the Happy Women Lead Academy. Every single month, we are digging into a different topic, a different thing that's going to help us learn how to balance our lives, our careers, our families, all those good things. And so if that's you, Come on over, get the support that you need and get coached by me uh, in the Happy Woman Lead Academy. All right. Until next time, I will 